Hello, students. We're going to go over 1.3, uh, representing describing transformation. So first thing we talk about is a rigid motion. A rigid motion is uh, where we transform the sh figure. So we take a figure and we move it around, and uh, we would be ch not changing the shape or the... Uh, or the, the length of any of its sides. We wouldn't change the angle. So we're not gonna make the shape bigger or smaller. Um, we're not gonna change one side. It's We're gonna turn it, we can move it up and down, we could rotate it, we could spin it, um, but we're not gonna change uh, those things there. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna write a rule and then we're gonna check and make sure that our angles are the same and that our lengths are the same. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and write down uh, this right here, this little mark here, we say A prime, this would be C prime, this would be, uh, or excuse me, B prime, C prime, A prime, that's how we'd say it. That's uh, what we call this right here, this would be called our pre-image, and then the A prime, B prime, C prime would be our image. So we're going to come here and we're going to write a rule now for these. The first thing we're going to do is identify our X and Y or, of each point, so A is 2 or it's 1, 2, over 1, up 2. B is over 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2. And then C is over 3, over 3, and down 2. So 3, negative 2. So then we go and compare A prime. So now you have A prime. A prime is over 2, left 2, up 1. B prime is over two, so left two, and then left two, and then up four, and then C prime is over two, up three. So now what we wanna do is we wanna write a rule. How do I go from this value to this value? So that's kinda of where we're starting, okay? How do I go from my X value Okay, how is that going to move over here? So if I look at it, I could say I subtract 3. So I could say the subtracting 3 works. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2, yep. 4 minus 3 is negative 2, that doesn't work, okay? So subtracting 2 doesn't work. Okay, well, I could try multiplying, timesing by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 equals negative 2. 4 times negative 2 does not equal that. So that doesn't work, okay? So... Those don't work. Adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing doesn't work. So now I just look at it and say, hey, what do I notice is I see 1 and 2, and then I see 1 and 2. All right, so I notice that they just they switch spots. I look at 4 and 2, and it switched to 2, 4. I see 3, 2, and it switched to 2, 3. So I notice that the Y and the X switch spots. The other thing I notice is the 2 was, neg was positive here, and now it's negative. Positive, now it's negative. It was negative, now it's positive. So we're going to say we switch the sign of that. So that's our rule that we'd write. Next, we have to check to conserve, uh, to check to see if it uh, preserves length. So we want we want to com uh, compare then is that like A B. And we'll do it now. This okay. So that A B needs to equal A prime, B prime. So if I look at AB, AB is right here. It's over one, two, three units. So AB equals three. Then I check A prime, B prime. That's up one, two, three. So A prime, B prime equals three. So hey, we're good. AB equal each other. Now I gotta check my next side. So I need B, C to equal B prime, C prime. So now what we're going to have to do is for these ordered pairs is we're going to have to um, go ahead and, and, and uh, do the uh, distance formula. So if I'm checking BC, so B was 4, 2, and C was 3, negative 2. So then I subtract 4 minus 3 squared plus 2 minus negative 2 squared. So that's 1 squared plus 2 minus 2 is 4 squared. So that's the square root of 17. So that's 16 plus 1. Square root of 17. So now I'm going to check B prime. Okay, B prime was negative 2, 4. And C prime was 
two, three. So then I go ahead, negative two minus two squared plus four minus three squared. So that's negative four squared plus one squared. So that would be 16 plus one, which is the square root of 17. So those ones equal. So now I gotta go do my next one. And uh, we'll continue on. So now I gotta check that a, uh, AC is equal to A prime, C prime. So A is one, two, and B was four, two. I don't want B, I want C. So C was three, negative two. And now we go ahead and check one minus three squared plus two minus negative two squared. So one minus three is negative two squared, which is four, plus two minus two is four squared, so that's 16. So that would be the square root of 20. So now I wanna check A prime, C prime. So A prime was negative two, one, and C prime was two, three. So negative two minus two squared, plus one minus three squared. So negative two minus two is negative four squared, plus one minus three is negative two squared. So that's 16 plus four, which is the square root of 20. So we just check all of our um, uh, side lengths are preserved. They're all the same. 17 squared of 17 equals square root of 17. 20 squared of 20 equals square root of 20. And we had three equals three. So now what I gotta do is take out my protractor and I have to measure the angles. So I'm gonna measure the angle A. So I take out my protractor and I look and angle A equals 63 degrees. So then I, check, take, uh, then I go over and check A prime. So if I look at A prime, it equals 63 degrees. Then I check angle B. Angle B is equal to 76 degrees. So I check B prime. B prime equals 76 degrees. Then I check C. C is equal to 41 degrees. And I come over here and I check C prime and it's 41 degrees. So what we'd say is since we'd say angle A equals A prime and B equals B prime and C equals C prime and now we have AB equals A prime, B prime. BC equals B prime, C prime. And AC equals A prime, C prime. Okay, since they're all equal, okay, then the transformation Preserves length and angle measure. So that's how we go through that one. So quite a bit there to go through, but uh, just remember, uh, you can, uh, for any horizontal line or vertical line, you can just count for any um, a diagonal line, you're going to have to use a distance formula. And then to find the angle measures, we can just use our protractor. So I'm going to skip over those examples there. They're the same idea. And I'm going to go down here. So we want to use a coordinate notation to write a rule and then confirm this, that it is not rigid. So this one's saying it's not rigid. So we're going to change the length um, uh, of a side or the angle measurement's going to change. So my first thing is, how do I go from four to four? Okay, so then I want to check negative two to negative two, zero to zero. So it looks like, hey, in our rule, our x value doesn't change. So then I go to next. How do I go from one to three? Okay, so I could add two. Well, then I go here, negative one plus two is one. That doesn't work. So addition doesn't work. 
So then I could say, okay, well, what about, okay, how can I go from one to three? I could times it by three. So one times three is three. Well, negative one times three is negative three. Negative three times three is negative nine. So that works. So then we're going three times my y value. So that's my rule that we would look at. And so all we'd have to do is just check one side to see that it's, uh, again, to show that it's not a rigid motion. So I'm just going to check that jk does not equal j prime k prime. So j is 4, 1, and k is negative 2, negative 1. So I subtract 4 minus negative 2 squared plus 1 minus negative 1 squared. So that would be 4, that would be 6 squared plus 1 minus 1 is 2 squared. So that's 36 plus 4, which is square root of 40. Then I come over here and I have j, k, so I have 4, 3. And I have k prime is negative 2, negative 3. So I go 4 minus negative 2 squared plus 3 minus negative 3 squared. So 4 minus 2 is 6 squared, plus 3 minus 3 is 6 squared. Okay, and so that's 36 plus 36, which is the square root of 72. So we just showed, okay, that jk does not equal, okay, these are not congruent, so the, the motion is not rigid. So we'd say since jk does not equal j prime k prime, the transformation is not rigid. That's how we go through. So then we want to go ahead and we want to check uh, the next one. So as we're looking at it, we're going to do the same thing. How do I compare these y values uh, to it? So when we, um, when we look at it, and again, I'm just checking over my work, making sure I'm good. Okay, so then we come through the next one is, uh, okay, so how do I go from negative 2 to negative 4? How do I go from 4 to 8, from negative 2 to negative 4? So I look at that and say, okay, I'm definitely, uh, I'm not, uh, subtracting 2 won't work, 4 minus 2. So I'm going to try, that's multiplying by 2. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, so that works. So I have my x and my y. So my rule is I'm multiplying 2 times my x value. 4 times 2 is 8, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, so we're good there. So then I want to look and say, okay, what am I doing for this 2? So I'm going from 2 to 1, so I could try subtracting 1. 2 minus 1 works, 0 minus 1 definitely does not work, so subtracting 1 doesn't work. Well then, how do I get smaller? Well, I could say I'm dividing by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, that works. 0 divided by 2 is 0 still. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so that's what we're doing. So you could say y divided by 2. Um, you could say 1 half of y, so you could say 1 half of y. You could do it either way um, as we look at it. But that would be our rule. So once again, when we go to our, what we want to show is that they're not congruent. So I'm just going to check mn, all right, and show that mn does not equal m prime, n prime. So mn is negative 2, 2, and 4, 0. So negative 2 minus 4 plus 2 minus 0. So that would be negative 6 squared plus 2 squared. So that would be 36 plus 4. So that would be 40, square root of 40. Make sure you put the square root on there. So then we check m prime negative 4, 1, and n prime, 8, 0. So negative 4 minus 0, or minus 8 squared, plus 1 minus 0 squared. So that would be negative 12 squared, plus 1 squared. So that's 144 plus 1, so that would be a square root of 145. Obviously, these aren't equal. So once again, since m n does not equal m prime n prime 
um, the uh, the transformation is not rigid. The nice thing about proving something's not, all you gotta do is show it for one case. So that's how we go through uh, looking at uh, a transformation showing if it's rigid or not rigid.